Hey guys, this is Ricardo, and in for review this week is the Hager Fayon GMT. Now, for those who aren't familiar with the brand, Hager is a micro brand based out of Hagerstown, Maryland. They produced their first watch in 2009, and that was a Rolex Mill Sub Homage. That watch got a lot of attention in the watch community because of just the quality they put into that watch. Fast forward 11 years later, and now they've given us a GMT. Not their first GMT, but their first non-diver-styled GMT. Now, if we jump into the specs of this watch... Um, Hager produces two versions of this watch, one which comes in at 38 millimeters and this version which comes in at 42 millimeters. We have a case thickness of 13 millimeters with this beautiful sapphire crystal, domed sapphire crystal. Lug to lug is 49 millimeters. You have a signed screw down crown which produces and gives you 200 meters of water resistance going to the bracelet bracelet starts off at 22 millimeters at the case and tapers down to 20 millimeters at the clasp if you open up the clasp you see this beautiful simple case back with the spearhead of course spearhead being synonymous with the word faon if we go and close the clasp, you also see that the clasp is signed and that the clasp is an expansion clasp. If you pull back on these two buttons here, it expands to close, just push back in. Going back to the front of the watch, you have this beautiful sandwich dial which basically means you have two layers of dial. First layer has cutouts for the indices and the numerals, and in this instance, for the logo. Beneath that is a layer of luminous material. If I cover the watch a bit, you can see some of that loom. Of course, the dial is a Fume dial. You have these broad arrow hour and minute hands and this lacquered blue GMT hand. Now at first glance, of course this is a GMT, but some people may be asking, well, where are the GMT numerals or where's the GMT bezel? Well, Hager decided to do away with those and kept this dial simple. Now, when I first got the watch, I have to say, I thought that this would be a little confusing and it might take a little bit of a learning curve to kind of get used to reading the GMT hand on this. But surprisingly, it doesn't take that long to get used to this. I'd have to say within a couple minutes, my mind was already telling me, well, six is 12, that indices, indices to the left is 1400, and that other indices is, of course, 1600. When you take that into account, you look at this and you could say, okay, it's 1500 and 20, 26 minutes um, where the GMT, in terms of time, where the GMT is pointing to. So that, that didn't take a long time. It, it, it's really something that after a few minutes of use, you're pretty much on the right track. Now that we've kind of gone over the specs of the watch, let's jump into my personal opinions. Now I'm not gonna shy away from the fact that this watch has the de design elements which lean heavily towards Panerai and towards Omega. Of course, this brings up the whole big debate that the watch community has in terms of homage watches, but I'm just gonna move that debate completely to the side. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to base my opinions on just the pure quality of the watch. And once you start thinking in those terms, this is a great watch. You look at that dial, I'll show some macro shots of the cutouts. The cutouts on this dial are just amazing. They're sharp. The edges are perfect. The broad arrow minute in our hands. I mean, the great detail, great detail on the GMT hand. The case, the whole watch is comfortable. The bracelet is comfortable. The weight is perfect. Now, one downside I have to say is a, this comes with a pin and collar bracelet. Links are solid, but the bracelet is pin and collar. I wish they could have just gave us screw down links. That would have been perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of screwed down links. I think it just makes the process um, of sizing your bracelet much easier. Um, another thing is, of course, the expansion clasp. It's a beautiful feature to have, but of course you get that extra thickness on the watch. Going back to some positives, I think the overall shape of the watch, which is kind of this cushion shape, is very comfortable on the wrist. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about the 38 millimeter version of this watch. For my seven and a half inch wrist, I have to say this sits on my wrist pretty well. Um, and I won't just say it, I'll actually put this on. Let's take a quick look of how this looks on the wrist. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. You can see it sits comfortably. That dial, once again, is just amazing. It's not too big, it's not too small. There's not a lot, of, there's not a ton of jiggle. There's, there's a, a good amount of weight, and I, I always appreciate this on a, on a watch. There's a good amount of weight on the watch head so that it sits, once it sits on the wrist, it sits. There's not a lot of, oh my gosh, it's gonna be moving a lot from side to side. It's, it's a very comfortable, secure feeling. Going back to the case itself, you have different elements, mostly brushed, polished here and there, but overall it just ties in well. Yes, I know this is a homage watch. Yes, I know how some people feel about homages, but guess what? This watch is a good watch. It, it, it really is a good watch. It's a great job by Hager. It's a nice, simple dialed GMT. Um, for fans of Panerai or, or who, who may be looking for another option, I think this is a great option. Definitely take a look at this watch. Now in terms of pricing, um, this watch, as you can see, it's Swiss made. Inside, I don't know if I've mentioned, you have that Soprod C125 GMT movement which gives you about 42 hours of power reserve. So the, the, there's definitely a premium in terms of pricing. So in terms of pricing, the watch comes in at $1,165. That is the price of admission for the watch. But my personal opinion, I think the watch is a very good watch, even at that price point. It's one of those things where I could sit here, guys, and kind of explain to you, you know, just how good this watch feels on the wrist, but you really need an opportunity. If you're on the fence, to definitely hold this thing in your hand, um, try it out. Uh, Hager tends to go to some of the micro brand meetups and uh, the, the shows. So definitely, if you have an opportunity, to go to one of those shows, or if you happen to, to know someone around you who owns one of these um, uh, at a local media meetup, definitely try it out. Um, the watch is a great watch. And I definitely would give it my stamp of approval. Well, that's it guys. That is my review of the Hager Fayon. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section. 
I'll also include a link to the watch, the watches page on the Hager website. But thank you for tuning in. And once again, that was my review of the Hager Fayon GMT. Thank you.